for Jesus. We won't even get dressed to come to church. But we say we love the Lord. We won't even open up our Bibles. We'll never stand for Him. They're standing against government. They're standing against idolatry. Sin and all. For the name of Jesus. They love Him. And let me give you a a, a footnote. One day we're going to have to stand in judgment next to the man in red China. The man in Africa and India and Muslim nations that are giving their lives for him. One day this play play church and play play gospel and talking about people talking about you and silly mess is not going to mean anything when people have gotten their heads cut off for Jesus. This childishness this consumption of sin the sinning without blushing will come to an end. I want you to see the attributes that were in Israel. Verse 6 says this, The princes of Israel, each one had used his power to shed blood. That means those who were influenced, in, in, in positions of influence, like our government leaders and, and legislators and representatives that, that are considered to be princes, people who have the influence of other people's lives. And the Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Uh, any people, if there is sin in government and leadership, it is a reproach to those people. We sit here and we absorb government corruption and we know that people are sinning and misusing the laws for their own benefit and shedding innocent blood and we sit quietly and silently and don't open our mouths and endorse people and condone sin that God has put us in the nation to to expose. We, We condone it. The princes, the Bible says, use their power to shed blood. That's corruption at its highest level. Look at this. I want you to see this. The Bible says it didn't just happen, but it happened in you. See, in Corinthians, the Bible says every sin that a man commits is outside of the body, save sexual immorality. And so what happens is when, when the scripture says talking about sin that is in you, it's talking about the intimate nature of the corruption that is in you. It's not outside of you. It's in you. So, so this whole verse 6 through 12 starts dealing with all the, the attributes and sin that was in Israel. That's in you. And God is pointing out. He goes to a systemic level. But he starts with the attributes that are in you. He says to them, this is what's in you. You have princes who use their power to shed innocent blood. That's in you. See, that's in us. That's in us. See, that's not something that just happens outside of us. That's in us. We, we embrace it, accept it, we condone it because it's in us. See, there's sometimes there's certain things you're predisposed to do and accept in other people because it's in you. And that, that means that, 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 that it, it opens the door for sin to become widespread because you will embrace and condone what's in you. You won't speak against what's in you. You won't come against what's in you. You won't decry against what's in you. And so the first thing the prophet says, nation, this is in you. Look at this. In you, they have made light of father and mother. And in your midst, they have oppressed the stranger. In you, they have mistreated the fatherless and the widow. In you, they have a disrespect for authority, mothers and fathers. They have a disrespect for the stranger. That, that's called the, the immigrant. That, 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 in, in other words, they're an immigrant. This is supposed to be a nation of immigrants. But what, what is in us is immorality now. See, see this, this was the country that's supposed to be, and I'm going to get to this point, a melting pot where immigrants and Irish and 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 Asians and Europeans and all kinds of people who have come and Africans have come from all over the world, the globe, and this is supposed to be a melting pot. And so who are we to start talking about illegal immigrants and treating them like they don't have any right to be here when we are nothing but immigrants ourselves? The people who truly have a right to be here are not Indians because Columbus didn't have enough sense to properly name and define a people who were Native Americans. American, they are the Native Americans. We are not the Native Americans. So who are we to tell the Hispanics that they don't belong here? The Chinese that they don't belong here? The, uh, 
It is a nation of immigrants. But our immorality is such that we, and, and we're guilty of it as African Americans too, because, you know, we, we have such an impoverished mindset and a slave, enslaved mindset. And, and, and don't let me start that, that, that the uh, 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 Caucasian ha uh, in this country has a superiority complex that is not from God. The Bible says that no man should think of himself more highly than he ought to think. And you should not change the image of the incorruptible God. The Caucasian thinks of himself so highly that when he paints the image of God, he makes God look like himself. Rather than him changing into the nature and image of God, he reduces God to himself because he thinks of himself so highly. See, we're not going to get... No man has seen the face of God, but in kids' books, when they show God sitting on the throne, he's a white man with a white hair, with white beards. See, that, that shows you how corrupt you are in spirit because you have the audacity to put your face on God. The invisible God. The unseen God. No man has seen his face and lived, but you presume and assume that when you see his face, it'll look like yours. Can I teach? It's an arrogance and a conceit, and we too have problems. Who are we to be fighting and arguing with the Hispanic and treating them like the, uh, the, as, as aliens and strangers and oppressing and suppressing them and putting them in subservient and, and subservient role to us when, when in fact we used to be them? It seems if anyone would have compassion and a heart for them, it would be us. If anyone understands, but particularly those who are believers, who understand oppression, who understand systemic uh, 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 issues that push other people out and alienate people that God is trying to bring to himself. If anyone should understand, it should be those who have been alienated. So I don't, want you to understand, I don't want you to get it twisted. This ain't a white thing, black thing. This is a sin thing. And I'm going to both extremes to show you that the, info, in, the mindset of inferiority and superiority are both sin. Can I teach? The Bible says that they not only they've oppressed the stranger and dishonored the mother and father. This nation has no honor and respect for mothers and fathers anymore. Our television shows and programs dishonor mothers and fathers. Kids shows treat parents like they're bumbling buffoons. And we sit our children down in front of televisions. And networks are endorsing this kind of behavior and wondering why our children and grandchildren are going out of their minds. When you sit here and you, and you condone the, the, the blatant dishonor of parents. When the Bible clearly says, children, honor your mother and father and obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. It's the first commandment with a promise from God. God says, I promise you, if you do not honor your mother and father, it will not be well with you. And your days will not be long upon the land. This, I promise. But because we're America, we figure that we get a pass because we're America. We can dishonor our mothers and fathers. We can, we can develop systems where our children learn how to do that. And we get a pass that our days will be long. It will be well with us. Why? Because we're America. That's the arrogance and the conceit of this defiled nation. 